In this quick take video, we'll cover a brief overview of the boot ROM in the Xilinx SOC and ACAP families. This video is part of the series on the Xilinx embedded software stack. For the hardened processor systems, ROM code built into the device is responsible for initial boot up of Zinc, Zinc Ultrascale Plus, and Versal. ROM is short for read-only memory, so the boot ROM is software code that cannot be modified. In Zinc SOCs, the boot ROM is stage zero of the three PS software boot stages. Hard-coded boot ROM executes on the primary CPU, that's CPU zero, after a power on reset, abbreviated as POR, or after a non-POR system reset. The boot ROM is the first software to run on the application processor unit, abbreviated as APU. The main tasks of the boot ROM are to perform basic hardware initialization that is required to enable first stage boot. Copy the first stage bootloader, abbreviated as FSBL, or the user code from the boot device to the on-chip memory, abbreviated as OCM and then branch the code execution to the OCM. If the boot ROM detects an error while executing, it locks down the system and generates an error code. The boot ROM can do secure boot with authenticated and encrypted FSBL and bit streams, or non-secure boot. Secure versus non-secure is defined by the user in the boot ROM header. The boot device is selected by the boot mode strapping pins. When the system boots from a flash memory device, it's considered a master mode boot. The supported master boot devices are SD, NAND, NOR, and QuadSpy. NOR and QuadSpy have optional execute in place mode, abbreviated as XIP, where the FSBL or user code is executed directly from the flash instead of being copied to the OCM. The PS master boot device holds one or more boot images. A boot image is made up of the boot ROM header and the FSBL. To recover from an error condition, the fallback feature enables the boot ROM to try to load another bootable image from the same boot device. NAND, NOR, and QuadSpy support fallback. In JTAG boot mode, the boot ROM code does minimal system configuration and enables a JTAG interface. The JTAG chain routing can be configured for cascaded or independent mode. The slave boot modes require an external processor or controller to load the programmable device image. An advantage of using a slave boot mode is that the device image can reside almost anywhere in the host system or over a network connection. The system boot up process in Zinc Ultrascale Plus is managed and carried out by the Platform Management Unit, abbreviated as PMU, and Configuration Security Unit, abbreviated as CSU, each of which is a triple redundant processor with ROM code and a small private RAM for execution. As a side note, if you see a reference to boot ROM in Zinc Ultrascale Plus and PMU or CSU is not specified, it's typically a reference to the CSU ROM. The boot up process consists of three functional stages. The pre-configuration stage is controlled by the platform management unit that executes the PMU ROM code to set up the system. The PMU performs a number of security operations, and once these security operations are complete, the PMU cryptographically validates the integrity of the CSU ROM before releasing reset to the CSU. The CSU initializes the on-chip memory determines the boot mode, and in the configuration stage, the CSU ROM interprets the boot header to configure the system and load the processing system's first stage bootloader code into the on-chip RAM. After FSBL execution starts, the CSU ROM code enters the post-configuration stage, which is responsible for system tamper response. The PMU controls the power-up, reset, and monitoring of resources within the system, including interprocessor interrupts and power management registers. 
the CSU manages secure and non-secure system level configuration. The CSU also contains the key management unit, crypto accelerators, and the PSPL programming interface. PL refers to programmable logic. The CSU boot ROM can boot the system from QuadSpy using 24 or 32-bit addressing, SD0 and SD1 for SD2.0, and SD1 with SD3.0 compliant voltage level shifter, EMMC, or NAND external boot devices in master mode. QuadSpy is the only boot mode that supports execute in place. Slave boot is supported for PSJ tag, PJ tag, and USB 2.0. There are two JTAG port interfaces, PSJTAG and PJTAG. The PSJTAG port can reach all TAP controllers on the chain. The PJTAG interface port provides exclusive access to the ARM DAP controller. All modes can be non-secure. Modes that can be secure and signed are all except for PSJTAG and PJTAG. This table from the Zinc UltraScale Plus Technical Reference Manual shows more detail for the boot modes just mentioned. The Platform Management Controller manages system startup in the Versal ACAP. The PMC is responsible for securely booting and configuring the platform from the primary boot source in a multi-stage boot process that supports both a non-secure and a secure boot, and lifecycle management, which includes device integrity, debug, and system monitoring. Versal has four key system startup phases from boot through lifecycle management. Phase one is pre-boot. The PMC hardware must detect that the power is valid and that the external power on reset is released to initiate the boot sequence. Phase two is boot setup. Initialization and boot header processing is handled by the PMC ROM code unit, abbreviated as RCU. The RCU loads the platform loader and manager abbreviated as PLM, into the PMC Platform Processing Unit RAM, abbreviated as PPU RAM. Phase three is Load Platform. Boot image processing and configuration is handled by the PPU. The PPU executes the PLM from the PPU RAM and does configuration, which includes initialization of the DDR, the network on chip, abbreviated as NOC, programmable logic, and processing system, and then the PPU completes the device boot. Phase four is post-boot. The PMC transitions to platform management and monitoring services, which includes power management, partial reconfiguration, system error management, safety monitoring, security monitoring, and soft error mitigation. The PMC can boot the system from these primary master boot devices, QuadSpy using 24 or 32-bit addressing, SD2.0 on SD1, and SD3.0 on SD0 or SD1 with an external SD3.0 compliant voltage level shifter. EMMC on the EMMC1 controller in FAT16 or 32 file systems, or RAW mode, and OctalSpy. The primary slave boot modes are JTAG and select map. All the primary boot modes, except for JTAG, are secure boot capable. The boot modes that are secure boot capable support both symmetric hardware root of trust and asymmetric hardware root of trust. This table summarizes the boot modes supported across Zinc, Zinc UltraScale Plus, and Versal. This table summarizes some key boot features across the three architectures. Let's look at some of the boot features introduced in the Zinc UltraScale Plus generation. Fallback allows the device to automatically boot from the next good image when the current image on the same primary boot device fails to boot. Multi-boot allows the software developer to specify a different image on the same primary boot device to use for the next boot. In Zinc UltraScale Plus, these features became available for SD and EMMC. 
The integrity of the ROM code is validated using a SHA-3 cryptographic checksum. FSBL, PMU firmware, and PLM can be validated using a checksum for safety use cases. The physically unclonable function, abbreviated as PUF, enables the generation of a device-unique encryption key. To protect against differential power analysis, abbreviated as DPA, key rolling is supported. This limits the amount of data encrypted on any given key. Next, let's look at some of the boot features introduced in the Versal generation. In addition to the protocol-level DPA countermeasure of key rolling, the AES GCM in Versal offers built-in leakage reduction. And the Versal boot ROM can detect and error out if a voltage glitch is detected. Xilinx FPGAs and system-on-chip devices typically require multiple hardware and software binaries to boot. These binaries can include FPGA bitstreams, firmware images, bootloaders, operating systems, and user-chosen applications that can be loaded in both non-secure and secure modes. BootGen is a Xilinx tool that enables the user to stitch binary files together and generate device boot images based on the user-provided boot image file, or BIF, attributes. The headers of these boot images are read by the boot ROM during the system boot-up process. BootGen provides assignment of specific destination memory addresses and alignment requirements for each partition. It also supports encryption and authentication for secure boot. BootGen enables the user to dump the contents of a boot image generated by BootGen into a human-readable text file. This is useful in debugging and understanding the contents of the different header tables of a boot image. BootGen can be used via GUI or command line. The tool is integrated into the Vitus IDE for generating basic boot images using a GUI. However, the majority of BootGen options are command line driven. Non-secure parts of the BootGen code are now available on GitHub. For additional information about the boot flow in Zinc, Zinc Ultrascale Plus, and Versal devices, refer to the technical reference manual and software developer guide for each architecture. For Versal, PG352 will also be of interest because the CIPS IP sets up the boot mode. For additional information about BootGen, refer to the BootGen user guide. The Xilinx DocNav application also has sections on boot and configuration in the embedded design hubs.